Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished professional who's speaking to us today from Coimbatore, India, Mr. Hethal Sonpal. Hethal, welcome to the show. Hey, Ashu, it's, uh, it's great to be on this show. Um, I've been looking forward to this, so look forward to a very interesting conversation with you. Thank you. Uh, Hethal is a startup evangelist, an angel investor. He's a coach. He's uh, a sales, marketing, and strategy leader, and he's an author. He's an author of a book titled uh, Against All Odds, and you can see the book just behind him. Uh, Hethal is also uh, completely an Iron Man, and he's a mentor of change for the Niti Aayog. So, uh, uh, Hethal, before we get into coaching and your books, uh, tell me about your own journey in brief. Hey, thanks, Ashu. And I, it's 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 quite uh, humbling, you know, whenever I get a chance to speak like this. Uh, it it traces me back to that uh, innocent kid who grew up in a small town called Bhopal. Mm-hmm. Had no no clue what's going to happen. And, you know, when I look at, uh, when I, you know, have conversations with my teenage daughter, I'm like, you know, don't be worried about where you want to be because mm-hmm. you have no clue where you'll end up. So, you know, right. my journey has been uh, very similar that way, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I never planned a, a lot of things which happened with me in life. And I think uh, the biggest uh, learning point has been, you know, rather than you trying to discover life, mm-hmm. let life discover you, right? That's it. Rather than you reaching out to people, let people know you in their own fancy ways and they come back and give you a version of you which you never imagined right um so you know tracing back uh, you know right from childhood i had engineering as a dream first year of engineering i realized it's not what i want to do mm-hmm. i wanted to be an engineer just because my dad was one yeah I quickly moved my next goal post to sales and marketing i felt i was a salesy guy and i could really do well in quote unquote marketing mm. so right from second year in engineering i was focusing towards cat and you know want to get into an mba and institute and do my mba mm. um but you know uh, as fate would have it fourth year in engineering i didn't have a job i didn't have an mba entrance as well but i was not uh, disturbed by it you know i said okay i'm going to sit home and prepare mm. uh, applied for a walk in interview at the pro got a job there while i was waiting for my mba entrances uh, got through nm narsi monji uh, decided that was it decided to ditch my two ms applications which i had got confirmation for in the us mm-hmm. i said let me stay in india and be close to my parents and i don't regret that decision ever wow. so i had a gloria a glorious uh, 16 year large corporate experience with four organizations with pro microsoft linkedin and tell uh, worked across different roles uh, apac uh, sales marketing strategy though i started as a coder right uh, mm-hmm. my boss in the pro told me do the dirty your hands with coding before you actually venture out but what's been instrumental in uh, my professional career the last seven years where I've been more like, a, as I mentioned, a startup evangelist where I started as an angel investor, got the knack of the startup world, was totally enamored by uh, some of the awesome entrepreneurs uh, which I got a chance to work with mm-hmm. and kind of realized that that's something completely different life which you want to live. It became more like a social obligation where I was actually doing more of mentoring and advising rather than just crunching the numbers and trying to understand what the financial returns of my startup are. Well uh, but touch wood, you know, I, I had early successes and I think that gave me confidence. I kind of reinvested some of that money into uh, more companies and, you know, I've got a portfolio of about 25 odd startups. But more importantly, I've interacted with more than 200 odd entrepreneurs in the last seven years, got exposed to different business models and different journeys, which kind of, you know, encouraged me and catapulted me into my latest venture, which I think is not mentioned in the interview, but in the uh, introduction, but I'm doing my PhD. Right. Oh, wow. I, okay. I went back to school after 22 years. Uh, I'm doing my PhD in entrepreneurship from I am Cozy Court. Mm-hmm. Uh, very fortunate to get a very humbling guide there. But more importantly, uh, my networking skills helped me to ne- network with a lot of entrepreneurship uh, research gurus worldwide uh, mm-hmm. and had a chance to meet some of them face to face, some of them virtually. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. And that's that's my way of like, you know, inter interjecting uh, uh, what my learnings with my startup journey was with the research and what it talks on the way of course you know i i got into this crazy thing about uh, reading 100 books every year i done five years on the trot um, my book last year happened uh, more more i mean my complete credit goes to my late father who kind of inspired me to write a story about him mm-hmm. and i made it more like a 
uh, a self learn self learning journey i would not call it a self help yes, journey but you know, everyone everyone can see their part of kishore in them right fantastic That's that. fantastic uh, so we'll come yeah, to all of these start. topics but let me since you've spoken about startups uh, let's start yeah. let's ask you a few questions on startup and you have you said you've got 25 uh, portfolio companies in your own portfolio let me start by asking you that what are some of the basic mistakes a lot of startup entrepreneurs make the first one mm-hmm. if i have an idea i'll get money mm-hmm. completely wrong right yeah. ideas don't get funding right uh, execution does right yeah. yeah i mean if you're a serial entrepreneur you know the very fact that you are thinking about a startup people you know vcs will line up at your door to pay money mm-hmm. but if you're a grounds up entrepreneur especially if you don't have uh, you know a uh, lot of work experience you don't have a rolodex you don't have a reputation of any sorts just to come up with an idea and expect you to get funding is wrong right that's number one mm-hmm. uh, number two is you are not your customer right so you need to touch and feel and uh, embrace your mm-hmm. end customer multiple times over before you decide Mm-hmm. that con- before you get that confidence that no i have a solution which this guy needs right mm-hmm. that product market fit or i would say a product consumer fit uh, rarely happens uh, as often as it should and mm-hmm. i think a lot of people go wrong and third uh, entrepreneurship really really shit scary career to get into mm-hmm. uh, in 10 times before you do because uh, you know everyone talks about the successes very few people talk about failures it's a very lonely profession honestly mm. I mean, you can't even be honest to your own spouse forget anyone else in the world right right you'll always say oh no no we are doing good you know it's going great i'm going to say that you come back to your office and you're like oh man this guy has not turned up the sales has not happened mm. so i think you know I, of course i can go on but i think i would just restrict to these four right okay. um your idea doesn't get you funding um think deep down on the product con- consumer fit mm-hmm. Um, it's a extremely lonely journey and and you know be ready for failures mm, very interesting um the next question i have is and again you know you've put money and uh, have supported so many uh, startups a question that is often asked hetal is that should a startup entrepreneur bootstrap as long as possible or yes. should one raise money whenever it's available very good question so i think Uh, of course everyone starts with bootstrap right very mm-hmm. few are lucky to get a check today one but yes to stretch that bootstrapped uh, uh, stature i think is very important right and i've had instances where an entrepreneur was like sir paise mil rahe hain lo ke nahi lo mujhe chahiye to nahi lo ke nahi lo i think it depends on the market condition right uh, if we had this conversation 6 months back it was a no brainer just take that check mm-hmm. right but uh, you know this other part is uh, if you're never taken money and mm-hmm. you can do well you you might, might as well sustain Correct. but you already got into that you know vc bandwagon where you know you're running after valuation rather than value mm-hmm. uh, you might probably want to take that money and keep it uh, just for a rainy day at some point of time uh, don't refuse that mm-hmm. but yeah, if you're used to not uh, going if you're used to you know using your own funds and you're doing well and you're getting a check you might as well say no to that for now because if you got a option now you're going to get that option later and trust me more than anyone else that particular vc who is willing to fund you now and when you say no to him he would be the first one to come back to you when you say yeah, i am ready because mm-hmm. he appreciates that yeah. well said uh, when you look at uh, you know supporting another startup or investing in a startup what are some of the factors that you look at i have a very simple four point scale um profile of the founder right what you what the founder has done before this what is the academic background where has he worked you know has he accomplished something which can help me to understand not that he has to be a olympic gold winner but you know something which kind of helps me to mo- know a bit more about him mm-hmm. than what he would admit um second one is uniqueness of the idea right i hate cut copy paste models and my simple solution is a simple point is that if you are copying someone today Mm-hmm. tomorrow someone else will copy you right so that's like a never ending journey mm-hmm. um, the third one is scope for monetization right a, a lot of people are attracted by eyeballs and downloads especially in the consumer market they really give uh, no sh- uh, you know no importance to profitability and trying to make a dhanda out of it which mm-hmm. i think is very bad right so uh, route, uh, route to monetization is very important and finally uh, road to exit right mm-hmm. Uh, i'm coming in as uh, you know maybe i might be there or with you all the way but at some point of time i want to monetize my stake in your company mm-hmm. how clear are you in terms of you know who's going to ascribe a particular value to you as far as an acquisition is concerned mm-hmm. and hey you know if you have an ipo dream all the best to you but i hope you have you know very clear benchmarks in place 
which will be a mandate when you look at an IPO, right? So I think these four things uh, more or less cover everything. Yeah. Fascinating. So let me now move to your other avatar, which is as a coach. Yeah. You know, as you said, 16 years in the corporate world and all in tech sector. What made you decide that you wanted to go in for coaching uh, as your next uh, gig or your next uh, big move? In all humility, I'm not a coach. I always believe I'm a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. And in my learning journey, if I come across uh, stuff or if I come across knowledge and wisdom, which I feel can be shared, mm -hmm. I would be happily willing to don the hat of a coach and try and share it with other people, right? And I think that's the that's the whole idea, right? When you work for large companies, you accumulate a lot of information and knowledge, mm -hmm. which generally startup entrepreneurs don't have too much information on because they never work that way, right? Mm -hmm. They never work with those organizations. So uh, for me, coaching is more like social work, right? I believe that if I could actually be a uh, I, if I could be instrumental in someone's journey and make a delta difference uh, mm -hmm. for him or her to be able to learn something, to be able to do something differently, to be able to do something faster, right? Um, as the Olympic uh, uh, slogan says, right? Faster, longer, higher, right? Mm -hmm. uh, any delta difference which could make. And I believe that, uh, you know, coaching is very um, suave, um, uh, soothing, and it's very uh, satisfying, right? So just like uh, as a parent, you see a child growing up and you mm -hmm. see, uh, the child showing, uh, responding to your actions or responding to your commands or responding to your suggestions. Mm -hmm. Similarly, as a coach, uh, the, the beauty lies when the unstated word is understood by the mentor, by the mentee. Mm -hmm. And he or she, you know, does stuff which you would have always wanted him to do it, but you never mentioned it. But mm -hmm. he kind of got that idea. Absolutely. So it's, it's more about sharing, um, exploring and of course it's it's a learning point for me right i learn from my entrepreneurs mm -hmm. i learn from how they take up business model which i had not even visualized mm -hmm. but now i can you know go around the market saying that i'm a master at it and uh, when you coach uh, entrepreneurs what are some of your own unique perspectives or, or your own background that you bring to a coaching relationship great question so first thing i i uh, you know raise my voice as far as failure is concerned. Mm. Um, I deeply emphasize on honesty and straightforwardness. Mm. Uh, I talk from my own experience. I'm, I, I, I'm the first one to admit my own failures. Uh, one of my most popular blog is the title called Jobless. Mm. Uh, I, I, had, I didn't have a job and I, I went way back in 1997 after ranging, I didn't have a job. I went around in streets of Bangalore, dropping my resume at every IT company, which I could <laughs> grab my hands on. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, humility helps a lot of people understand you much better mm -hmm. than what uh, street smartness can ever do. Correct. Correct. Um, so I, I, I try and focus on the basics, uh, focus on the numbers, mm -hmm. try and ensure that you are writing everything down. Uh, writing brings out I, I refuse to have a verbal pitch from anyone right mm -hmm. I tell them give me a deck give me a complete deck only then I'll have a conversation because when you send me a deck I'm so well prepared my mm -hmm. first comment would be a feedback or an advice to you rather than asking hey who are you mm -hmm. right and that kind of sets the tone uh, the entrepreneurs also know that you know they can't bullshit their way around um, they also know that you know I'm here uh, to make a meaningful difference and make it fast mm -hmm. right I don't want to like spend months together with you, hobnobbling with you and then say, okay, now let's start, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Maybe that's, in a, in a way, it's called impatience, but I think that's impatience for a good. Mm -hmm. No, no, great response. Uh, one more question on coaching and then we'll move to your book. Sure. Uh, you have worked with young founders. You must have worked with senior, older leaders and so on. What are some of the areas that you think the young leaders need to be coached in? Um, I think first one is time management, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are onslaughted with so much of digital content all the way. We make big deals about going on a di digital detox, mm -hmm. but we don't realize that why did we get into that digital zone in the first place, right? What's stopping us from making uh, digital or social be more of an asset than become such a big liability that you have to take a detox, right? Mm -hmm. That's one, time management. Uh, second one is uh, patience, right? Uh, a lot of people are in a hurry. Whether it's the investor pressure or it's the competition pressure, we tend to give ourselves much less time than what we would. Right. Uh, the third one is teamwork, right? I mean, we need to realize that the biggest learning for a leader is giving up, mm -hmm. right? Giving up responsibility, giving up ownership, 
um, giving in to a lot of element of trust to his people, right? And yes, you you tend to want to take a lot of time understanding, but trust me, uh, when you want to learn yourself, you don't give yourself a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you let others learn, give them time, uh, give them that chance or that space for learning. Mm-hmm. And I think they will ultimately yield mm-hmm. results if they're honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's where the fourth thing is, get the right people, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, spend disproportionate amount of time on hiring, get the right people. Because once you get your right team in place, uh, whether good times or bad, the team will deliver. Mm-hmm. If you get a wrong team, even in the best of times, you would not be able to succeed. Mm-hmm. Well said, great response, thank you. So Heather, now let's move to your book. Uh, it's titled Against All Odds. Right. Um, I'm assuming it's available on Amazon and a whole lot of other bookshops. Very much. Yeah. So yeah. before we, before you tell me about your book, I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out your book. I will go and check it out myself. So tell right. me a little bit about your book. So it's it's an accidental journey, I would say, right? Uh, the um, So there are two parts to it, right? Uh, first is uh, December 2017. Uh, you know, I was coming back from my uh, 25th school uh, reunion in Bhopal and, you know, I was talking to a schoolmate of mine and he's a, he's a voracious writer and a good writer. And I was like, hey, I'm thinking about writing. Maybe someday I want to write a book. So he laughed. He said, you know, uh, Hetal, I know you. I think you need to improve your uh, vocabulary a lot before you start writing. So mm-hmm. do a lot of reading before you start writing. Mm-hmm. And that's how 2018, my 100 book journey happened. I continued that uh, going forward. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, when I uh, was in, in uh, hospital in uh, Koyamthur on June, uh, early June 2019, my dad had been uh, diagnosed with cancer recently. And it was his first injection and first treatment, which we were initiating at that day. I don't know what struck me. I told my dad, dad, I'm going to write your biography. Mm. And the the beaming smile on his face, I can't forget. He was so excited about it. And then he honestly admitted that this was his fourth proposal for someone to write a book. He said three people had approached me earlier. Uh, First thing I'm going to do is call all three of them and tell them, no, my son is going to do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he worked as a registrar at a school here in Bharti Vidyabha in Koyamthur. Next day, everyone in the school knew that, uh, you know, Kishorji was excited about his son writing his biography. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was fortunate. Uh, I picked up a subject which was very supportive and very easy. My dad had a phenomenal memory, mm-hmm. right? So the the basic idea, of course, was to trace back his entire life journey. Mm-hmm. But uh, interestingly, it ended up being more like a, a self-help book because of the courageous stuff which he did in all his life. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. um, came out of poverty childhood, sponsored his own um, school, sponsored his own engineering uh, found himself the first job, quit uh, a, a blooming career in railways just because he could not digest corruption in the public domain. Mm-hmm. Came to private sector, realized that corruption is still chasing him, but still he made a mark in his own way. A uh, lot of beautiful stories about uh, survived a train accident. When he was in college, he survived a 103 degree temperature and uh, a typhoid flu for 21 days. His family had like of left him off to vegetate and they had left hopes of him surviving. Mm. Not he just survived, he survived and came out stronger. Uh, fought cancer, fought um, uh, 14 years of uh, multiple heart blockages with just pills, right? He refused to go to a surgeon. He refused mm-hmm. to go to the hospital till, of course, cancer was in his last stage and he had no choice and we forced him to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. But yeah, phenomenal journey. And of course, the the spiritual and the life lessons which he's left behind, uh, there was a series of his diary writings which I had shared on LinkedIn earlier, which are definitely a part of the book as well. Mm-hmm. So his learning, his, his life is his biggest learning. But then his thoughts, his ideas, uh, the way he managed himself, the way he brought me and my sister up, I think that's phenomenal stuff for everyone to learn. Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of, and, and, you know, the person who's written the uh, foreword, uh, chairman of Bharti Vidyavan, Mr. Krishna Rajwan, he's rightly put it, right? It's not necessary that, uh, you know, people who are accomplished and famous, only they deserve a biography, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. People in the ordinary life, the if you start publishing their biography, a lot of people will be able to relate to it mm-hmm. and will be able to see their own life as a biography mm-hmm. material. Mm-hmm. And I think that's my objective. Uh, I, I want youngsters to learn and ask their parents about their tough times. Who knows? A lot of uh, biographies are, or my, memoirs are waiting to be written. Absolutely. Wonderful. So, Hethal, I have time for two more questions. Sure. Um, my next question is on your, you know, doing the Iron Man or yeah. competing in the Iron Man. Tell me a little bit about what goes into preparing for one of the toughest races in the world. 
uh first a disclaimer my training is definitely not the most appropriate training uh i i kind of did it in like two months flat right so the iron man was in kazakhstan on 14th of august while i'd done a bit of swimming and a bit of cycling and running i've been running since 2013 so in all honesty i didn't worry too much about run it was the swim and the cycle part which i was concerned about and of course i did a half iron uh, way back in 2019 uh, february in delhi but you know the swim part was in a pool which was very comfortable mm. and the cycling was 90 kilometers uh, compared to 180 kilometers which i had to do for a full iron mm. and uh, and swim was supposed to be 3.8 kilometers and it was open water and i'd never jumped into an open water before i did that in kazakhstan on one day before the event so i was that unprepared mm. <laughs> sort of thing but yeah june and july were two core months where i trained rigorously um, mm. i did 29 kilometers of swim wow. 850 kilometers of cycling and uh, 230 kilometers of running and this was all done in nine weekends in the months of june and july uh because you know weekdays i hardly had time to do such long runs so uh, saturdays were swim plus bike uh, sundays were long run a uh, lot of focus on nutrition i i tracked my nutrition by the minute every biscuit was accounted for every non essential drink was ditched uh, for the preparation but the tragic part was on 30th of july just two weeks before the iron man mm. i had a terrible bike accident and i fell and i fractured my left uh, wrist mm. um the doctor had no hopes on it but i persisted that i want to go so he put me on a cast on that very same day which was removed on the 8th of august uh but on the 14th of august when i biked uh, when i swam of, of course i didn't have anything uh, on me when i biked i was supposed to wear a splint which i decided not to because i'm not feeling the pain but uh, i completed my iron man in 15 hours against my target time of 16 hours um and i think uh, i would probably thank god uh, and thank my father for making me that uh, give me that iron spirit to do that um for, for listeners who don't know iron man is a triathlon uh, in, includes 3.8 kilometers of swimming 180 kilometers of cycling and 42 kilometers of running mm-hmm. uh, average cut off time is 16.5 to 17 hours you can take as many break as you want as long as you stay within these cut offs mm-hmm. and there are individual cut off times for swim bike and run as well mm-hmm. uh, it's a very popular event started in 1978 there are about four Four five million or the uh, Iron Man in the world right now. So mm-hmm. consider yourself yes. very lucky if you Absolutely. finish one. Absolutely. And my last question, you Hetal, sure. is for the many many people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your own amazing journey and all your own learnings, and you've got so much knowledge and you know wonderful input from your father. What would you say are three lessons you want our viewers and listeners to take away? from your journey and from our conversation very very interesting honestly i i kind of had about uh, without any exaggeration about 100 or podcast mm. uh, i've never come across this question and it really makes me think mm. um, i think the first one is never give up mm-hmm. life is a continuous learning mm. and be humble and nice to everyone uh, the world is full of good people uh, just ignore the bad i could go on and on on this topic but i would want to just let these three laser focus points uh, remain uh, as a carry away for the listeners Fantastic. and yes of course um, heartfelt thanks to all the listeners i think it's been a privilege if you have reached the end of this podcast sorry ashu no no that's okay and on that note uh, hethal and your three wonderful lessons which i think are so powerful never give up uh, life is a process of continuous learning and your third one was be humble Thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey. You had such an amazing journey. Thank you for talking to me about startups and all the amazing stuff you're doing in supporting so many startups and startup entrepreneurs. Thank you also for talking to me about coaching, about your book uh, against all odds uh, and it's fascinating to see how much uh, love and affection you have for your father that you were actually rewriting all his thoughts and his own journey in the form of a book which is going to be good for so many different people and finally thank you so much for telling me about iron man and how you have even though you said very modestly you only trained for two months but i know so many people who do, do the iron man where it's an absolutely incredible thing to complete it and you say you finished in 15 hours thank you again and good luck to you Thanks, Ashu, and you've been very humble and modest. Uh, a lot of listeners don't know you. I hope they will be able to look back at the phenomenal journey you have had, Ashu, as well. It's an inspiration and a wonderful opportunity to talk. 
and hope, hope to catch up with you sometime in person thank you thank you so thank much you. thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals you can also follow us on youtube facebook instagram and twitter just search for the brand called you